Hi, everybody, and uh, well, that was a bit loud. Uh, and thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, I will be uh, presenting uh, Project Radar Gun, which uh, is a tool that can be used for measuring performance uh, in uh, Java based in memory data grids. Uh, before moving forward, a few words about myself. Uh, I've been working for Red Hat for the last five years. Uh, I've been mainly involved in the JBoss AS clustering stack, projects such as JBoss Cache, JGroups, Tree Cache. Uh, in early 2009, Manik Sultani and I started uh, the InfiniSpan project on which I've been uh, uh, working ever since. Uh, at about the same time, uh, I've also started w uh, writing Project Radar Gun, which is an open source benchma benchmark framework uh, for in memory data grids and which is the subject of, of this presentation. Um, the agenda I'm going to start by presenting what we're measuring, that is in memory data grids. Uh, so I will just introduce briefly what in memory data grids are, uh, some common characteristics of all these. Uh, uh, data grids projects, and uh, also discuss some projects that, that uh, have been around for a while. The next sec section focuses on the tools we use for benchmarking data grids, mainly uh, radar gun. Uh, it discusses the challenges of benchmarking such distributed systems uh, and the motivation we had for writing project radar gun. Uh, then, it will, uh, then we will take a look at how Radar Gun works and uh, the type of benchmarks it, it can run. So first things first, uh, what is an in-memory data grid? Uh, well, it is uh, pretty much a distributed uh, data management system that uses memory as storage. Uh, the storage itself is distributed over multiple processes. They are called nodes. Uh, the total storage capacity being the sum of the individual nodes capacity. Uh, all the nodes communicate over the network. In this example, we have three nodes. The data you place in an in-memory data grid uh, is generally duplicated or multiple copies of it are being held because memory is volatile and you want to, to still be able to have the data even if some of these nodes crash. Uh, it can, the data can potentially be backed or it can overflow to some persistent storages with higher durability, such as relational databases or files. This is uh, needed, for example, when you want to turn down the whole system for an upgrade and you don't want to lose the data. You'll just flush everything, for example, to a database or to a file system. And then when you, you run the upgrade, and Restart it, you, you preload your data from there. Uh, at, at this moment, uh, there's no standard yet in the in memory data grid space, but uh, one is emerging, that's JSR uh, 347. Uh, this is mainly the result of the fact that uh, many such products share very similar characteristics. The API is generally map based. Uh, and there's no schema used, really. Uh, the in-memory data grids are built with horizontal scaling in mind. Uh, that is, by adding more nodes to the cluster, the capacity in increases proportionally, and the performance is preserved. Um, in order to achieve horizontal scale, uh, most of the data grids make use of consistent hashes, um, this is a te technique that has been around for a while and which is described at large in uh, Amazon's Dynamo paper. Uh, data grids also keep uh, serving clients when nodes are being added or removed from the cluster. Uh, that's in fancy uh, data grid term is called uh, a topology change. They are built from scratch with the idea that nodes might be added and removed at runtime and generally offer good transactional support. That's what elasticity is about. Uh, they expect node to crash. There are mainly two ways to access uh, a data grid that is embedded and remote. 
uh, in the embedded mode, the client and the grid node reside in the same JVM. Uh, the communication between the client and the server is fast because there's only in-VM calls, not, no overhead for serializing objects over the wire. Also, transactional support is available for most um, uh, embedded access. On the other hand, the remote access involves the client residing on a different JVM than the uh, one used for the grid nodes. Very similar to the way databases are being accessed. Uh, not all data grids uh, offer transactional support for this kind of remote access, for this client-server access. Uh, these are only some of the offerings out there which have been around for a while and which I'm more familiar with. Uh, I focused on the highly consistent ones that use memory as the, the main storage. So there are some open source uh, implementations such as InfiniSpan, EHCache, or uh, Hazelcast, or some commercial ones like Oracle Coherence, or Gigaspaces, XAP, VMware's Gemfire, or IBM's Extreme Scale. Uh, as a note, InfiniSpan will also be offered professional support. Um, Soon, it is, it is branded as JBoss Enterprise Data Grid, or, or EDG. It's beta now. So everybody knows that benchmarks are evil. Um, why, why did we need another benchmark tool to, to produce such, such evil things as benchmark results? Um, well, the, the need was there because as a library developer, uh, you really make, want to make sure that you won't end up having 50% um, performance uh, regression from one release to the other, and that happened to us. Uh, also, benchmarking a data grid is not that straightforward because, because of its distributed nature. Nodes need to be started at the same time, then you have to run the same code on all the nodes at the same time, get the results somewhere, and generate reports. Uh, quite a laborious activity, so we needed some way to automate this. Well, of course, we also wanted to compare ourselves with competition. Um, but another very important use case is for our users. Uh, RadarGun makes it easy for uh, everyone to prototype their application to make sure, for example, that a certain data grid provider offers them the performance they look for. What they need to do is just download the RadarGun, write a, a simple extension, then use it to launch uh, a benchmark over multiple nodes and try different configuration, perhaps. So it's, it's a tool which is useful and it is used for a prototyping application. So how does RadarGun work? Uh, this diagram shows it running on three nodes. Uh, on each of these nodes, the same logic runs at the same time. So first, we start the data grid on all the nodes. Uh, after the data grid is started on, on uh, all these nodes, we run some validation just to make sure that the cluster is correctly formed. Then we run the warm-up stage. During the warm-up, well, basically, the, the purpose of the warm-up is to make sure that the um, hotspot kicks in so that you get results as close as possible to a real-life situation. After warm-up is executed on all nodes in parallel, uh, we do the actual benchmark, we run the actual benchmark. The benchmark, again, is a code that's run on each of these uh, uh, radar gun nodes. It accesses the, the cache wrapper, it accesses the, the data grid nodes, does writes, reads, and measures the time it takes for doing that. And then it generates the results, which are sent to a single node centralized, and the, a report uh, is being outputted. We will see how the uh, report looks like uh, in a few slides. Is this visible from behind? Cool. So um, let's see how a radar gun configuration looks, looks like. This should tell us quite a few words uh, about how, data, data, how radar gun runs as well. Uh, we have a master node in a radar gun, uh, which is the node which coordinates all the other uh, uh, radar gun nodes. That's where the reports will be generated. 
this particular benchmark runs on a cluster which has the initial size 2, then, then each subsequent run increments the cluster size by 1, up to 4 nodes. So basically, all the tests will be run on 2 nodes, 3 nodes, and 4 nodes. This way you can see how, how, how your uh, application scales out. Then we have several stages configured. Destoy, destroy wrapper, this will shut down all the previous uh, data grid instances on all nodes. Then we start the cluster so that we have a pristine start. We validate that the cluster is successfully formed. That is, all the nodes see each other and the configuration we use is valid. We run the warm up. After the warm up, we clear the cluster so that there is the, whatever we added during the warm up is no longer there. So we run again on a pristine uh, data grid. And then we run the actual web session benchmark. This is the benchmark itself, which is the web session benchmark in this example. And then we, we generate the reports. In this, for this configuration, this configuration of the benchmark, we compare two products. Uh, is JBoss Cache and InfiniSpan 4, and we compare basically two configurations of these products. We may add multiple configurations for each product here just to see how, perf how they perform uh, one compared to the other. And then we generate the reports. Um, this basically generates one report that contains all the results for all the configurations, but you can, you can mix configurations the way you want. So, the report is uh, much more powerful than it, it's shown just here. Uh, there is a set of scripts that is shipped with RadarGun, uh, benchmark.sh. Basically, this, this uh, script receives the benchmark XML we've just seen in the previous slide, and it runs whatever that tells you to run. Chart, it's used for customized and generating certain charts after the benchmark is run. This.sh. Um, this is very useful for checking the evenness of the distribution. Like, uh, if you run a benchmark on 10 nodes, you want to make sure that each of these 10 nodes will take um, about a tenth of the number of keys you add in the whole data grid. Otherwise, if, you, if your distribution is very uneven, like, for example, one node has half of the load of the cluster, then that will become a bottleneck. So, that proved very useful for us. Then there is a script to run local benchmarks. That's benchmarks for caches that are not distributed. Um, very useful for JSR 107, which is the JSR that uh, standardizes uh, caches. So um, now let's see what benchmarks um, we, we ship by default. Um, I'll just uh, focus on two. So two of the most used benchmarks are the Web Session benchmark and the uh, TPCC one. Uh, the Web Session benchmark simulates using a data grid for Web Session replication in order to achieve high availability. That is a very common use case for in-memory data grids. Uh, it doesn't induce any contention between the keys, so basically all the transactions happen in parallel on this junk key set. Um, then we have a TPCC benchmark, which is an adoption of the Transaction Processing Performance Council TPCC benchmark. That is a benchmark for measuring tra uh, the transactional performance of databases. A TPCC induces both read and write contention uh, between, between concurrent transactions accessing the grid. But the good thing is that it's very easy to add your a benchmark yourself. As I mentioned, you just uh, extend some file, uh, extend some interface, can write the way your application would access uh, the, the data grid, and then it's very easy to launch InfiniSpan to, uh, sorry, RadarGun to, to, to benchmark the performance of it. Uh, this is the kind of report the uh, RadarGun generates. I'm pretty sure it's not very visible from, from uh, the back of the room because it's quite small. I'll just, uh, so basically on the x axis you have 4, 6, 8, and 10. This is the number of nodes on which the benchmark was run. And on y axis you have the number of transactions per second per node, the average number of transactions per second per node. So you can pretty much check 
whether your uh, data grid scales horizontally according to your access pattern. Uh, this benchmark compares different versions of, uh, well, the same versions of InfiniSpan with different configurations, several transaction-related configurations. So this, the, the, this is the main output of the benchmark, which is the number of transactions per second. And the nice thing is that you can observe that based on your cluster size. Because, you know, you normally, when you use a data grid, you'd expect it to scale, but you also want to check that that really happens. But the, it's not only about the number of transactions per second, which uh, uh, is what RadarGAN can generate. It also gives you memory information. Um, for example, in these benchmarks, which compares, uh, again, to InfiniSpan configurations, we can see that for the 175 seconds, which is the duration of the benchmark, the memory consumption was, was like this. And you can look for memory spikes. Uh, you can also check the CPU, as uh, we'll see in the next slide. Uh, so this is the CPU usage um, and the garbage collection usage which seems to be missing for this graph, so I'll need to check why. But this is the kind of, you know, it's not only performance per se, which you can, you can monitor with uh, radar gun, but also how your systems uh, is using its resources. Uh, currently, we have uh, plugins for the following prod products, InfiniSpan, JBoss Cache, Coherence, EH Cache, Terracotta, JGroups, um, but again, it's very easy to, to write your custom plugin. Um, this is the interface you, you, you'll need to implement, basically. It's a cache wrapper. It has a setup and a teardown method. In the setup, you start and you configure your data grid instance. In the teardown, you shut it down. And then it has two methods for adding things to the data grid and reading things from the data grid and for, for uh, cleaning the, the data grid after that. Well, that's about it from my side. Uh, thanks again for listening to this talk. Um, and uh, if you want to know more, you can find on the RadarGun website. Uh, now we still seem to have like two and a half minutes. Um, so if you have any questions. Anyone? Yeah. That means it was either clear or <laughs> too fast. <laughs> well. Thank you very much for your Thank talk you. and we move on.